Hey everyone, welcome to my channel and this is my review of the Hubson Zeno Mini Pro. Let me just say if you're not familiar with the Hubson Zeno Mini Pro that it is the most advanced piece of technology on the market today for a drone under 250 grams. Nothing else on the market comes close to it. So what does that make it? Does it make it the best under 250 gram drone on the market? In some categories, yes. In other categories, not really. So to kick off my review, how about I bring this drone a little bit closer to the camera and tell you about the features available on this here little mini guy. First off in the back, we have two obstacle avoidance sensors right there, which is something that no other mini drone under 250 grams on the market currently has. And in the center, that is a USB designed to turn this unit unit into an external hard drive. Going around the side right here, that would look like a spot to put a micro SD card, right? Wrong! It looks like they designed it that way, but you cannot put a micro SD card in there. All there is is a tiny little bind button in there, if you ever had to use the bind button. Spinning it around to the front, what do we have? So up here we have two more obstacle avoidance sensors, and down here we have a 4K camera with a 3-axis gimbal. Whoa, that's pretty decent. Spinning around to the other side, what do we have? It looks like another micro SD SD card slot here, but no, that is not another micro SD card slot. Okay, so by now you're wondering, where is the micro SD card slot? Well, there is none. There's none. There's none on this drone. So when you buy this drone, you have two versions, two memory configurations. The memory's inside, so it comes with 64 gigs of memory inside or 128 gigs. That's why the price on this goes way up, because companies like DJI, they only put like 8 gigs of memory in their drones. This has got like 64 and 128. That is unheard of in a tiny little thing like this. Now let's flip it around and look at the underside. So what do we have here? So let me get some light over there. So up here we have two sensors. That's for landing, so it knows how high it is off the ground. And a few other avoidance issues down here. You have something they call a bottom optical flow, but they actually call it an avoidance system, but it's really an optical flow. And down here is a landing light. You don't have that on any of the DJI Minis because that's an LED landing light. It's, it weighs quite a bit and it does work and it does come on if the light gets low so that the optical flow works. So if you fly this in low light, this light comes on and the optical flow works and your drone stays perfectly stable in the air. Now another thing very different about this drone is that unlike other mini drones on the market, this battery that's included will get you 40 minutes of flight time. It's a 3000 milliamp hour battery so they've really packed a massive battery into this tiny little drone. Now you're wondering, 249 grams with all that? Holy cow! Well, actually, it is 249 grams on the nose, but if you leave this bottom protective landing plate on, it's over 250 grams. So what Hubson did is they said you can leave it on or take it off. So if you fly it, you just pull this off. Watch this. It's like, it's almost like putting prop guards on, but it's a landing thing. See, it comes off and there you go. And you're left with this and now you're at 249 grams. All right, so I'll put this aside because I'm not going to use this for the rest of the video. It's not necessary. Now let's jump over to the controller. I think I got everything on the drone, the basic stuff. Your controller is the same controller that you would get with a Zeno. Unlike, you know, like a DJI controller, DJI really, you know, they, they could have put a display in their controllers. They never do. You do get a display in this controller and it's very useful. It's your basic controller. You put your cell phone down here and everything else fits up top. You do get a 10 kilometer get that my head in the center you do get a 10 kilometer range with this controller uh and it really does work it has really good penetration you can fly behind trees and buildings penetration is really good depending on the version you buy you also get this charging block so mine came with this charging block and you can put four batteries on it my drone came with two batteries and this here case plus a few other things uh i think this is pretty sweet because it charges up the batteries quickly and uh, you don't have to sit there and plug one battery in after another after another. You just put four batteries on this and it will charge them all up nicely. So now you're thinking, man, this Hubson Zeno Mini Pro is like phenomenal. I gotta buy one. It's, it must be better than the DJI Mini 2, right? Well, let me pull over the Mini 2 and tell you the following. If you look at the specs on paper of this here Hubson drone, it makes this Mini 2 look like it was made by the caveman. It, it, it's very basic. There's no obstacle avoidance on the Mini 2. There's no tracking system on the Mini 2. There's no landing light LED for flying at night at the bottom on 
on the Mini 2. It's only got a 30 minute flight time. It's got a host of other things it's missing compared to this drone. That's the specs. And if I compare to the Femi, look at this, the Femi Mini. If I compare this one to the Femi Mini, you'd go, wow, this one's pretty awesome compared to the Mini because there is no obstacle avoidance on here. There is no landing light on here. Flight time is only just like the Mini 2, 30 minutes, you know. Yeah, so uh, what is the best drone? Well, that's a tricky question. If all you want to do is film the family and film events or go on vacation and do a few other things, the Mini 2 is awesome for you. And if you want range, this is awesome. If you need to track something and you want a low cost drone, then this one's pretty good, but it doesn't have the range like the Mini 2. Let's knock those out of the way. This one's got pretty much the same range as the Mini 2. A lot of the features of the Mini 2, not all of them, but some, most of the, the gooder ones. <laughs> Do you like that word? But it also includes tracking and obstacle avoidance and a longer flight time and the ability for flying at low light with this little light at the bottom so that it stays stable, whereas the other guys don't have it. So does that answer your question? You'd have to want something like this that does everything it does to buy this for the price it sells at. Does that answer your question? How about I get into this video a bit more and tell you all the great things about this and some of the not so great things and you can decide. Now, the first thing I wanna say is this is a product made by Hubson. Now, there's a lot of people out there in the world who are not familiar with Hubson products. I have every Xeno drone ever made by Hubson and they're all the same. Hubson is a company that puts out a product always, always, always before it's ready to be put out to market. And they use the 80% rule. If the drone is 80% good enough, let's launch it and get it out there in people's hands and then let the people tell us everything that's wrong with it and then we'll fix it. And it usually takes them about six months to fix all the problems. So are there problems with this drone? Well, there's little niggly annoyances that, you know, that to me are something you would not see in a DJI drone. So when DJI puts out a product, they work on like the 95% rule. So if the product is 95% good and then 5%'s got problems, they'll put it out there. But those little 5% of problems, they will fix them and they're usually pretty quick at fixing them. In other words, if DJI puts out a drone and it has issues, which every drone they put out has had issues, uh, usually within the first month, they have put out firmware updates to fix those problems so that the drone is almost like, it's closer to like to 98% perfect. They never get their drones to be 100% perfect, but they get them pretty close. Whereas Hubson, on the other hand, you know, they put out a drone and they will fix the issues, but it takes them like six months. It's firmware update after firmware update after firmware update. And sometimes they fix things and things are great. And then they make other things worse. And then they put another update. So uh, that's what you can expect with a Hubson drone. So you got to be in it for the long haul. All right, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go through all my tests and features of this drone. So every drone I get that is kind of expensive or leading edge, bleeding edge, which this is, I put it through a series of tests to see if it would stand up to, you know, someone like me. Would I use it? You know, I, I fly a lot of pro drones and these little minis, I kind of like them. So I really want some good quality. So let's go through my observations of this drone. First off, many of you want to know how is the video quality? Because that's what you're going to buy a drone for. First, you're going to buy it for the video quality, the photo quality, and then you're going to buy it for the obstacle avoidance and then you're going to buy it for the tracking abilities. That's what you want. So this drone has it all. So how is the video quality? Well, I think because of the chip shortage, they have a weird chip in here. In other words, when this drone, when you power it on and it's on the ground, it turns the video off. You cannot see what the camera sees when it's on the ground. It turns off the video transmitter because the video transmitter located in the drone gets very, very hot because it has to be very powerful to shoot out 10 kilometers. So they shut it off. So there is no video coming out. So that makes it kind of odd if you want to use the drone like in your hand without flying it, walking around and filming somebody. You can't do it with this. The motors have to be running and has to be flying for the video to work. And that's true for the photos as well. So if anybody was thinking of putting this on a tripod and walking around and filming, you can't do that with this baby. Now it's kind of funny. Hubson Xenos, since way back in the day they started making Hubson Xenos, they do something different with their file format and how they save videos. And and so many people goof it up. Even reviewers goof it up. 
So on a Hubson Zeno, when you record video through the front camera and it's recorded, they always make two files. One is high resolution and the other is low resolution. I don't know how many people pull out the low resolution and go, my God, the camera is terrible. It's got such low resolution. You got to pull out the file with the high resolution. I'll give you a hint. The high resolution file usually has the letters AA beside it. So just look for something with AA beside video you took and that'd be your high resolution file. This maxes out at 4K 30 frames per second. However, Hubson thought, you know what? Most people are more concerned with bitrate. So what they did is they put a manual bitrate in this drone. What I mean by that is if you take a DJI drone here, most of them, you cannot play with the bitrate. When you record video, the bitrate it's recorded at is pretty much set. You can't mess with it. However, in the Xeno Pro drone, you can mess with the bitrate. So you can bump the bitrate up. If you put the bitrate up to like 200 megabits per second, the file size is massive and the resolution and the detail is high. It looks like somebody put a sharpening on almost, but uh, by default, it goes to like 100 megabits per second, which is pretty much the same as the Mini 2. So I'll show you an example of that here. So as you can see here, I have the drone looking down at me with a bit rate set at 100 megabits per second. Now I'm going to change it and I'm going to crank it up to 182 megabits per second. You can go up to 200, but I went to 182. And now here's what the resulting video looks like. Do you see any difference? Probably not, right? Now to save space on the memory system, I'm just going to drop it all the way down to 54 megabits per second. And uh, let's see what the image quality looks like. Do you see any difference? Uh, you really can't see too much difference. You might see some blotching. If I was shooting maybe a tree, the leaves might look a little bit more blotchy, but all in all, the detail's good. So you can see the camera quality is actually quite decent on this drone. And having that feature of adjusting the megabits per second is a nice feature. You can make a really high quality file out of that that you can manipulate later in editing. Now I will mention I flew this drone on the windiest of windiest days. And I was hoping everything would come out perfect, but no. It does have a level five wind resistance, so you can fly it on windy days. However, mm, the gimbal, when wind is blowing on it hard and this drone is pushing through the wind, there's some vibration. I can see it when you take a look at this video here. As I'm flying along, look at the horizon. Do you see like a jitter happening? I notice it. I can see a little bit of jittering going on when the wind is there. And in some cases, I swear I saw a little bit of jello happening on windy days. If you fly it on a non-windy day and you're just hovering around filming normal stuff, I didn't notice any of that. So there's something strange going on with the gimbal, you know, and the wind as this is plowing through the wind because it's very small and it's getting knocked around quite a bit. So that is something that Hubson will have to address in a future firmware update and uh, that all be fixed because so many drones on the market when they first come to market have those type of issues and the companies usually address them eventually. Speaking of that, there's the common issue you have on so many drones out on the market and that is horizon tilt. That's when you're flying your drone and the horizon is like this. And then for some reason, the horizon is like this as if your drone is tilted. Well, your drone is tilted because the wind is blowing it like that, but your gimbal is supposed to adjust for that and stay level. You know, that's what a gimbal does. Not all cameras get it correct. And this one here, Every now and then it doesn't get it correct. So what did Hubson do? They knew that happens. They didn't have a fix for it when they launched this. So what they have is in the app, on the app, you can see it all the time. There is an option on the app right on the right hand side that you can adjust the horizon. Uh, if, you're, if you're filming and your gimbal is going wonky, you can adjust it manually at any point. Hubson, they're going to have to address that because I don't think a lot of you out there want to be flying along and next thing you know, hey, my horizon's kind of wonky. And then you got to manually fix it because if you manually fix it, as soon as you turn that drone and look a different direction, now your horizon is goofed up because you manually fix it. You have to put it back to default so that it readjusts itself. So that was the video quality, but how about the photo quality? Well, the photo quality is really good. I have no issues there. I took a ton of photos with this and they are really, really good. The only thing I'll warn you now is if you use some of the features on here, like it has panoramic mode and a few other cool little features you can do with the camera, uh, all it does is saves the photos in the memory, it does not stitch them together. So if you have the drone going like this, taking a huge panorama of some site or a sphere or whatever, it doesn't stitch them together. You have to take those photos and go stick them in your own software to stitch them all together to make a sphere or a panorama photo. As you can see here, you know, it, it works, but you gotta do it yourself. Now I'm just gonna bring in the DJI Mini 2 right now because there's one feature on it that I adore that I wish 
the Xeno head. And that is the zoom. Now I know you're going to say, hey, but the Xeno has a six times zoom. Well, it does, but there's a difference. So on this here DJI Mini 2, I can be filming something, you know, video mode and use the zoom and it records the zoom as I was, you know, zooming in. And that ends up on my micro SD card and that's my end result. And it's really good. I use it for roof inspections all the time or when something's too far away, I want to zoom in to capture it. So on the Hubson Xeno Mini Pro, it has a six time zoom and that zoom works really, really well. And I was having a blast using it in video, as you can see here, zooming in on myself when this thing was doing all its little uh, functions and flying around. I was using it in photos, as you can see here, and I thought it was really good. However, none of the zooms I took transferred themselves to the memory inside. So in other words, if I'm just filming in 4K and I go zoom in 4K 30, it looks like it should work, but it doesn't transfer itself back onto the file. I don't know if I have to be in a lower resolution for that to work. Same as when I was taking photos, I could zoom in on the photos, but it doesn't capture the zoom to photo. It wants me to do that afterwards in my own editing software. So that's one feature I wish Hubson had added. Now, another thing about this drone is I'm not really sure what sensor they're using in the camera. Hubson seems to always use a Sony sensor, but I didn't see too much in the literature where they mention a Sony sensor in this one. They do say it's a larger sensor than on a lot of mini drones. It's supposed to be bigger than probably the sensor on some of these other drones, I'm assuming, because that's what they say in their literature. And they say because of the larger sensor, you can do night video and photos with this drone, no problem. Uh, so I tried it in the night to see how it works. First thing I'll tell you is that flying this at night is a joy because this little light at the bottom automatically comes on. You just leave it on auto mode. The drone locks itself steady in the air. So when you're flying at night, it could just zoom along the ground if you want. And it looks so cool with that light shining at the ground. You can see it here in this video what's happening. But I will say, just like every other drone on the market, I was disappointed with the nighttime video shooting with a drone like this. The only benefit I can say is that in the video, as you see, uh, blacks are blacks and non-blacks are non-black. So at least it's, it's not putting noise in the video, which is a bonus. So how about the obstacle avoidance on this drone? This is the reason many of you out there are gonna buy this because you want a drone that's under 250 grams that has obstacle avoidance rear and front and you want the ability to fly for like 40 minutes and you want the ability to track yourself or track something else. So I'm gonna get into the tracking in a bit. Let me just tell you about the obstacle avoidance. Well, it works perfectly in my tests. I flew this at myself, full throttle with a joystick and it stops and that's front and rear. So they work really well. You get that beeping sound as it's coming at you or going at an obstacle. And at the same time, you get a display on your phone that shows you that there's something in front of you that is stopping this drone from working. Now, I fly with obstacle avoidance off on every drone I fly. I, you know, as soon as you know how to fly a drone really well, you don't really use obstacle avoidance. So it's, it's put there for beginners. On this one, it's pretty interesting. I think Hubson made it Maybe they made it for pros because the obstacle avoidance is always off every time you power it on. So if you go for a flight, you land, you change the battery, put a new battery in, you go to take off again, the obstacle avoidance is off. You're like, what? Hey, I was using it. Why is it off? So you have to remember to put it on. And what Hubson does is there's an audio uh, that record or a sound voice that pops out and it says your obstacle avoidance is off. You might want to put it on. No obstacle avoidance mode. Please fly with caution. So that's up to you to turn it on or off. Maybe Hubson left it off because it does suck a, lo a lot of power out of the battery. So when they have that 40 minute flight time, they probably did it with the obstacle avoidance off because yes, obstacle avoidance will cause your flight time to reduce. It takes uh, quite a bit of power if it's always on. Now the situations where I turn obstacle avoidance on for me as not a beginner, but a pro is when I have a drone tracking me. So if I'm walking and the drone is following me, tracking me, I'll put the obstacle avoidance on because I don't walk in open fields. You know, maybe I'll walk around buildings or around trees. It's got to go under the trees and everything else. This does not have that smart functionality like an expensive DJI drone. If there's an object in front here, I'll put my hand, uh, it's like this, it's just going to stop. It will stop. It won't go around the object, up, over, or anything like that. It's not that smart. Maybe if DJI makes a Mini 3 and they put obstacle avoidance in it, will they put something like that? I certainly hope so, because that would make the Mini 3 really good. 
That's another thing. I don't think the Mini 3 will have obstacle avoidance in the front and the back. I think the Mini 3 by DJI, uh, when it comes out next year, is only going to have it in the front. But enough about DJI. Let's get back to this, babies, because it, it exists. It's right here. I can feel it and touch it. So the obstacle avoidance on here is really good. But just remember, if it's tracking you, uh, it's not on the side. So I want to show you something here. I was out on my skateboard and I was using the tracking system, which I'll talk to you about in a bit. And I had the obstacle avoidance on and you can see right here it's filming me and all of a sudden this drone hits a lamp post that's way up in the sky for a football field it smashes into it it recovers and it keeps on flying and it keeps on tracking me and that's because it's following me sideways and there's no obstacle avoidance on the side so keep that in mind if you're buying a drone always have it follow you from the back of you or the front so let's get into the tracking on this here model so you have two types of tracking you have active track and you have gps track so active track is just basically draw a box around yourself draw a box around a car and Hubson says you can draw a box around a pet. This will follow pets according to Hubson. I couldn't try it because I don't have any pets, but I'm sure it does because it seems to, whatever you draw a box around, it seems to work and follow whatever you drew the box around. So you can see in this series of clips I'm showing you, I was following everything out of my field. I was following me, me on a skateboard. I was following a tractor, the guy running the tractor, a little tractor. And in every case, it works perfectly. The active track works. It doesn't matter whatever you draw a box around. That's what it follows. However, I will say the following. The active track on here only works as long as it doesn't lose you. And it can lose you if you or whatever it's tracking goes behind something and all of a sudden your image is no longer there. It is not smart enough to know that, hey, you walk behind something, so you must be coming out and I'll follow, keep on following you. It doesn't do that. It just loses you and sits in, sits in the air. It says it's trying to reacquire the target or look for you, but it never does. So then if you want it to follow you 100%, you have to use the GPS tracking. Now in both of those types of tracking, the obstacle avoidance does work, which is a bonus. So once again, here I am with the GPS tracking on a skateboard and I can go behind trees no matter what, and it will continue to follow me. It's not a problem. All right, let me tell you some of the features on this drone. I don't want this video to be too long, but I think it's getting long already but let me tell you the features really quick. So you have features as of the date when I reviewed this drone, which is now, which is a September, the year 2021. Hubson is adding features every month. So right now in the month of September, these are the features. So you have an orbit mode. Orbit mode works just like every other Xeno on the planet. You put the drone over yourself or over something else, and then you just select the radius and it will orbit around the object you pick at the speed you set. And you can do cool little things in orbit. Some drones will only, if this is the center, they'll only orbit around like that. Uh, the Xenos, all of them, if it's in the center, you can orbit around that way, but you can then spin the drone and have it look outwards as you're going around. So you can do both with this. Next, you have waypoint mode, which is on all drones. The cool thing about the Xeno is that it saves your waypoints so that you can repeat them at a later date. Uh, and if you do the waypoints, that's pretty cool that each waypoint you select or make, you can touch your waypoint and you can either delete it or configure it. So you can say, well, at that waypoint, I want the drone to be this high off the ground and I want to do the following. So it is pretty configurable and it does work quite well on the Xeno mini pro next for people that want to do cinematic footage you have line fly mode so you just pick a point on your map and then the drone will fly to that point but you get to choose how fast and at what height you want the drone to fly to that point and as it's flying to that point then you take your controller which is over here and use the joysticks and you can move the drone around to look at different things but it will carry on going straight doesn't matter which you which way you turn the drone and you can move the camera up and down so you see by doing that you can then get some cinematic filming shots because it looks like you know it looks like you're on a trolley or something as the drone is flying through the air looking around it looks pretty cool in other hubs and xenos they have like their version of quick shots but uh, they're supposed to exist but they weren't in this version right now not in the app so they'll be coming to the app i assume in the near future one interesting thing that i've never seen on any other drone is the cpu core temperature is shown on the app as you're flying it's in the bottom right hand corner and if you touch that say you're flying on a hot day you can see if your drone is starting to overheat and lose performance. So you tap on that and it gives you a color coding and it tells you the temperature of the CPU, which I think is pretty cool because if you're flying this on a hot day and it's getting kind of warm, it's not gonna function as well. So that kind of warns you that nah, you might want to uh, land and cool off your battery. Now for the range on this, they say 10 kilometers, which is like over six miles, I believe. And it probably doesn't. 
because I found it has really good penetration power. I'm in Canada and I can't fly this thing six miles out or 10 kilometers. It's illegal to do that. I can only fly it as far as my eyeballs can keep it in range with, that I can see it. That's the way we have to do it in Canada probably in other countries too. So I flew this out just over a thousand meters. I can still see it because it's blue skies. And um, by then it's, it's way too small to keep it in my view. So I had to turn around. But I will say flying it out over all sorts of interference, then flying it way over forests and fields, farmer's fields, and back to me, never once did I ever get any glitches in the screen, any jumping of video transmission back to me. So their claim of 10 kilometers, I'm gonna say they're probably not far off. So how is the speed on this thing? Is it really fast? Because a lot of people always want a fast drone. Well, it does have a sport mode. Uh, you have a bunch of features on here. You have camera mode, sport mode, and normal mode on your controller. And if you put it in sport mode, I, I only got it up to like 57 kilometers per hour, which is about 35 miles per hour. Now, of course, when you're flying, it, it depends on the temperature outside, the wind and everything else, but maybe you can get faster than me. But that was, that was pretty much my average top super sport speed was about 57 kilometers per hour. Flight time, they claim 40 minutes. Uh, mine came with two batteries and I'll tell you a funny story really quick is every time I review a drone, it doesn't matter if it's DJI or whatever and they have their claim flight time, I can normally fly two batteries worth and I usually have a GoPro on my hat that's filming and that GoPro lasts over an hour over an hour with the battery in the GoPro. When I flew this on two batteries, the battery in the GoPro died before the batteries died. In other words, this flies for a very, very long time. So they're 40 minutes. I don't think they're far off with that flight time. Obviously you'd have to turn off the obstacle avoidance, the tracking, a lot of other features, anything that's sucking power to get that 40 minutes. But if you do, then you probably get close to it. All right, so this is the part of the video where I give you my final thoughts on this Hubson Zeno Mini Pro. First thing you wanna know is, is it a buy? Well, for some of you out there, it's 100% a buy because you need a 4K camera, you need obstacle avoidance, you need tracking, you need a long flight time, you need the ability with that landing light to fly in low light at night and have it, or even indoors where there's not a lot of light and have it stable. So for all of that, yeah, it's it's the drone for you no matter what the price tag is and I'm kind of surprised at the price tag because by putting all that memory inside and everything else they squished into here with the technology to get it under 250 grams you know the price is really not that expensive when you think of it that way however it's not perfect as I've already mentioned in this video firmware updates have to fix many of the little glitches that I've noted and when that happens then you're going to have an awesome drone. So for some of you this is definitely a buy. For others if you don't need tracking and you don't need obstacle avoidance and you don't need any of that stuff uh, you're just going out filming a few things uh, whatever then the DJI Mini 2 is the best drone on the market currently for that. When the Mini 3 comes out, that'd be the best drone. I don't expect the Mini 3 because of the chip shortage. I don't expect it to come out this year, maybe next year. If it comes out this year, I think they'll suffer the same problem that Hubson had. Hubson said they delayed their launch because of the chip shortage. And I wouldn't be surprised if they used different chips in their drone that they then they wanted to use in the first place. And I think DJI, when they make the Mini 3, that's probably gonna happen to them as well. So they might have the overheating issues and stuff like that. Because the more you stick in these drones, in this tiny little package, it gets hot. So they have to really deal with that heating issue. And Hubson has dealt with it by turning everything off before you take off. And then when you fly, you can check the CPU core temperature and see how things are going with the heat. So with all of that said about the Hubson Zeno Mini Pro, I'm sure you can make up your mind now about which one of these drones, you know, you want. Or which, you know, whatever your budget can afford. So... With that said, I will also mention that Banggood is the company that sent me this drone. And because Banggood sent it to me, I have to use their links. That's the way it works in the reviewer world. So their links are below. However, because I'm a reviewer, I also get to ask Banggood and say, well, if you want me to review the drone, please provide a discount code that I can give my viewers so they can save money. And Banggood did. So there's a discount code below. So in other words, if you buy this drone off of Banggood, you will pay less money than maybe elsewhere because you get the discount as well. So check out that discount code. See if it's the price for you with the options or the features you want because it is kind of configurable on the website. You can get it with a bag, without a bag, with this, with one battery, two batteries, and I don't know, the memory changes and a few other things. Check it out. And as I mentioned, with every Hubson drone I have had in my entire life of Hubson drones, 
they all start out like this. They all start out with minor niggly issues that just pop up and then they get better. So by buying this drone now, most of the issues I mentioned in this video will probably be resolved, but it might take about six months until that happens. So maybe sometime in 2022, it'll be a perfect drone with all the firmware updates. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. And finally, if you have questions on the Hubson Xeno Mini Pro or the DJI Mavic Mini or the Mini 2 or the Mini SE, I have them all. I can answer your questions. Or if you have questions on the Fimi Mini, uh, yeah, just post them below and I will get back to you. And I can tell you any differences between all of the drones that are under 250 grams on the market and what would be the best for you. You've seen the video, you can decide which one is probably best for you because I've done reviews on all these drones. All right, guys, thanks for watching this video. Catch you in the next one. Bye.